I'm Leah Lawrence. And I'm her husband, Mitch Lawrence. And you are listening to the Southern Spirits Podcast, where I regale my husband with Southern stories of the macabre, the creepy, and the strange. And I drink. So what are we drinking tonight, Mitchell? Our beer tonight is not a beer at all, Leah. It's summertime strawberry hard seltzer. This is brewed slashed packaged by Pretoria Fields in Albany, Georgia. 4% alcohol by volume. And let's read the online description. Ready, Leah? Yes. Okay. Uh, Oh, shit, I lost it. There it is. Our gluten-free, 82 calorie, zero net sugar, zero net carb seltzer with all natural strawberry flavoring. Oh, Leah took one. Okay. But what I have to say about it is it is quite subtle. Uh, like all seltzers, but it's uh, it has a remarkably refreshing aftertaste. Um, Leah seemed to like the aftertaste, and I'm going to say something that's probably going to freak you out a little bit. When it gets a little bit warmer than like out of the fridge cold, it tastes like a strawberry cereal. It's like a Frankenberry, and uh, it's really good. I actually I really that. like it, but it's very subtle. It's, you know, it's a seltzer. There's not going to be much there, but it really tastes like Frankenberry after a minute like a puffy corn cereal with strawberry flavoring so i'm into it how do you feel it gives me like actual strawberry strawberry vibes not like artificial strawberry so i don't know quite where you're getting with the frankenberry but um to me it tastes like a just like any kind of carbonated water uh, when you drink it in it's it's not sweet at all um it's just sort of a refreshing seltzer and then like i said when you breathe out real heavy it tastes like you just Mm -hmm. ate strawberries and i enjoy that flavor too yeah Yeah, if you don't like strawberries you're not gonna like this but for the most part it's like i said it's not sweet at all it's unobtrusive Mm -hmm. you could drink a bunch of them if you wanted to it's refreshing i like it it's very summertime it doesn't feel like the fall vibes that i want but you know alabama's playing and it is like 85 degrees here so yeah I, I mean, it's still appropriate for our weather. October in Alabama is summer most other places. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah, it is. You know, you can have this anytime. It's it's nice. It's uh, it's about hell's back porch at this point. Yeah, like, true. No, thank you. So I gave this seltzer an eight out of ten. I enjoyed it. I could use some more alcohol content or something to bring some more flavor into it. But then again, you're having more than eighty two calories. So yeah, I was gonna say it's eighty two calories. If you're you know concerned with that, it's a nice locale option has a little bit of alcohol i like it i do too moving on our shot in the dark for the night something we've only had on once it's so amazing to go pull something from the liquor cabinet and realize holy shit we've only had this on one time because there's so much stuff over there and you figure all of it's been on two three times but this has been on once jim beam peach made and bottled by james b beam distilling company in frankfurt kentucky 32.5% alcohol by volume. If you would like to hear the full review, this was done back in August of 2020. Refer to episode number 122 called Mule Cleaning Money. And it got an 8.75 out of 10. Uh, It's nice. Uh, Shooting it is a little rough, if I remember correctly. Yeah. I'm not 100% though, so we'll see what happens. But anyway, that's it for the alcohols, Leah. Huzzah. Are we going to do another double uh, Sassy Southern Saiyan this week? No, I hope not. I didn't look this one up, so maybe. <laughs> Here we go. I mean, if it's double, we're, we'll just have to move on to something else. Um, because I'm running out of things that my grandmother says. Um, just like you ran out of town names? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we'll move, yeah, we'll do we'll another, move on to something else, or so. we'll cut it entirely. I don't know. If anybody's got any other ideas, let me know. Hit me up. Maybe I can share my family recipes. I don't know. <laughs> Sathy. Sassy. Sathy. <laughs> Sassy Southern sexual positions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Done. think they're regionally determinate sexual positions, are they? I see you've never heard of the Angry Dolphin. <laughs> oh, we've we've heard of Leah's the Angry Dolphin. Leah's heard of the Angry Dolphin. If y'all don't know what that is, <laughs> that's when you go to put it in her butt and she goes... <laughs> that's the Angry Dolphin. <laughs> I'm a pro with the Angry Dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that was uncomfortable. All right. But yeah, for real, if you've got any um, ideas for what we can do at the beginning that is Southern themed, let me know. Or if you yeah. think it's stupid and we should just drop it and get straight to the to the point of the story, I can do that too. Just let me know. All right. Anyway. All right. Okay. So for I'll this let you know. <laughs> evening sassy Southern saying, uh, here we go. There's not a pot too crooked that a lid won't fit. We've not done this one. 
Uh, and I have no idea what that could mean. <laughs> crooked lid sounds like a sassy southern sexual <laughs> position, though. Oh, that bitch crooked lidded me all night. No, she gave me a crooked lid. Oh, yeah. Now I can't walk too too far. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you walking like a crooked lid over there. <laughs> what happened to you? The angry dolphin. The <laughs> <laughs> Very nice, Leah. All right, what does it mean? It means that there's somebody out there for everybody. It don't mean, like, you could be the most fucked up human being on the face of the planet. Uh, you could just be absolutely... Oh, but someone's going to lay on top of you. I get it. <laughs> I mean, I don't think in so many words that that's what it means. I think it's more like there's a personality match out there for everybody. And there's not a person out there that can't find a group of friends or a significant other if that's what they're looking for. Like, you're going to there are other weirdos that are just as fucking weird as you out there. You just got to look around. Well, that's Um, just one of my uh, one of my favorite things Norm MacDonald used to say. Was when he would talk about having sex with someone, he would say, I just like to, I don't want to do anything crazy. I just like to lie on top of a lady. That's it. So I just, I thought that was perfect, Leah. It was apropos ah. for the sassy Southern sexual positions. All so right. Well, well, we've started with a crooked lid. Um. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we've already done, we gave you a bonus <laughs> angry dolphin. Next week, we'll do the Mexican Pepsi. That sounds racist. Maybe we don't do the Mexican (laughs) Pepsi. I don't even know what that one is. What that comes from is uh, we used to play Ring of Fire. Some people call it Captain Dickhead, you know, in in the fraternity. And we had a card that was categories. So we would do like candy bars and cars and and all this other stuff. And one time we did sexual positions. And it got to the point where people couldn't think of one. And somebody yelled out Mexican Pepsi. We were like, okay, go with it. (laughs) That's what that's from. So It's like no one wanted to call the bluff because yeah. everyone was concerned yeah, that they didn't right. know what it was. Moving on. Yeah, I'll go with <laughs> with Crooked Lid. Yeah. All right. Yep. Cathead Biscuit, you know. <laughs> oh, Leah, that, that 100% biscuits. is a Southern sexual position <laughs> because of how, how chubby all the Southerners are. You know so many people have just biscuits down there. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Is the cathead biscuit just Looks another like, word for a fupa? Just, I was just about to say fucking biscuit fupas <laughs> abound in the South. Oh, you know, they're best made with lard. I'm just saying. Um, oh. Anyway. That's very true. Cathead biscuits, but, I mean. Not the fupa. Without fail, there's always a hair or two in them. <laughs> without fail. What every cathead biscuit I've ever had has just got a long and curly in it. <laughs> and it's not a short and curly. It's a fucking long and curly. I'm very uncomfortable with the direction that this particular segment has taken. So how about we get into our very first story of the evening? That's fine, but you and I are starting a band called Biscuit Fupa. (laughs) (laughs) And our first single is Butter That Foop. Oh, uh, closely followed by the the B-side, Crooked Lid. (laughs) Oh. Butter that foop, Leah. Jesus. Mm. I, I, what am I supposed to say? Moving um, on. Okay. All right. We're going to go all the way to Texas uh, for the very first story of the evening. Okay. And we're going to be talking about um, a Bigfoot-esque creature that goes by a bunch of different names. Uh, but the main name, I guess, is the Caddo Critter. Um, okay. He has a lot of fun names, so we're going to get to them all. Is it Caddo like the town name Caddo? C-A-D-D-O? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, So the Caddo Critter from Caddo, Texas. So Caddo, Texas is tiny as fuck. Um, I'm not sure. I didn't look up the most recent census uh, stuff because who has time for that? Yeah, who does? To be fair. Also, I don't know if it's all been published or not yet. But as of the previous to the last census, um, it only had like 40 people living there. So this is a tiny ass town. Like it is. It is an unincorporated community. If I've um, heard of Caddo, how does it only have 40 people in it? Because there's like a Caddo, Alabama. Uh, that's this probably is what Texas. it is. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> so. Um, I got confused. Yeah, no, this is Caddo, Texas. Completely different place, um, I hope. Yeah. That would be well, weird. Anyway. We'll see. Um, so it is a, a very sparsely populated area of Texas. You have to remember. Texas is fucking gigantic. It is the size of many countries put together. It's yeah. a big ass state. Mm-hmm. Um, so like I said, it's got it's a very sparsely community 
sparsely populated community, a lot of farm town. Um, see if the camera's picking up just Steve's tail. Yeah, it it's is. just his ass. Because he's not sitting... I don't think he likes this box. We need to get him a bigger box. He sits in that box all the time. Yeah, but when we force him to, he'd much rather sits in front of it or like in front of your computer right now like he's doing. Can so. we get back to my story and not worry about the cat box? But it's just his tails in the camera. It's really I, it's cute. It's fine. He's adorable, but <laughs> not the point. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, so... So sorry. <laughs> I have a lot of notes, and I'm okay. trying to book through them because this is going to be a two-hour episode if I don't. Please, God. I'm not going to say <laughs> another word. Okay, thank you. All right, so, um, like I said, it's a very sparsely populated part of Texas. Lots of farmland, lots of rolling hills and Texas-type yep. landscape. Yep. And uh, in 1964, this quiet town was just you know, put all topsy-turvy because the Caddo Critter made its uh, first of several appearances. So it was first seen or at least first reported by a man named Charlie Gant. Mm -hmm. And uh, he saw it at about 1130 uh, at night on two consecutive nights in July of uh, 1964. And he said that he saw it um, in the first the first time and the second time he saw it and he thought it was, you know, messing with his livestock or whatever. And so he, quote, unloaded his gun at the critter. Uh, but either the bullets bounced off of it or he was just a real shit shot because it didn't do anything to the damn critter and the critter just ran off. Uh, and the animal was seen a few other times by other residents uh, to the point where everybody in town was just a buzz. There was a flap. It was a Bigfoot flap. Uh, and people around town were kind of worried and um, everybody knew about the creature and everybody was worried that it was either going to mess with their livestock or, you know, their dogs or their children, whatever. Everybody had a reason to be concerned mm -hmm. that this big monster is hanging out around town. So, uh, according to the paper, um, it was a paper out of Abilene. The paper uh, stated, quote, um, everyone has said the same thing. It's about seven feet tall, four feet wide, and covered in hair. So that is the description. Like a southern fupa. Yeah. Of the <laughs> Correct. Gross. Of the <laughs> caddo critter. Um, and so, you know, it it had been seen by a couple of other people in town. Um, but the... Um, the Gantt encounter was the first one that actually hit the media and people got pretty scared at that point because everybody knew about it. Everybody knew the description. People were looking out for it at this point. And it was such a fever pitch kind of tension in the town that people were sitting up late at night to shoot whatever it was. If it showed up on their property, they were going to shoot it. Yeah. And so a lot of the people that thought it was probably a hoax or some teenagers in a suit or something like that were really worried that you know the teenager was going to get shot on sight because of all these kind of crazed gun-toting homestead folks you know like yeah. that's a dangerous situation if you're in an area where you know lots of people have guns maybe we don't dress up in the full monster costume and like terrorize the neighborhood because you're going to get shot i don't know we we tangentially know some people who dressed up in a bunch of foil and just ran through a field sure so. um and then there was the other one <laughs> where the dude had the the cow skull and on the side of the road and he did get shot at so like Maybe if you're planning on... I don't think I know that one. You weren't paying attention. It's fine. Most likely. Um, but uh, if you're planning on doing something like that, maybe go into an area where you know there's a very low gun to human ratio. Mm -hmm. Like, don't do it down here. It's a bad no. choice. Because in Caddo, Texas, I would imagine of those 40 people, there's probably six, 700 guns. Yeah. In those 40 people. I mean, and, and a lot of these people are ranchers and farmers. And I mean, yeah. just because of... The different, like, snakes, coyotes, etc. Having a rifle is not uncommon on a farm just Correct. to take care of predators and whatever. So, mm. I, like I said, reasonably so in most places like this. Um, but, yeah, don't right. don't go dressing up like anything or you're going to get shot. Don't um, go <laughs> dressing up like anything. I mean, like oh, Halloween, you could shot. probably get by with it. But other than that, maybe don't do oh, it. Oh, no, it's still Caddo, Texas. You're right. Uh, like oh. I said, I don't know anything about Caddo other than that it had a critter. So, 
They had maybe a critter. I'm, maybe I'm painting them all with one big gun-toting brush, but... They had a critter. Yeah, they did. Um, so, uh, another person uh, reported seeing the cat oak critter. Uh, it was a nine-year-old boy named Gene Couch, and he saw. He said he saw the creature run about 200 yards uh, in front of his house because um, he was walking to his fishing spot, and the, the thing just sort of came out from the underbrush, and he freaked out and went right back in to the house and told his mom hey mom there's a fucking monster out there and she's like oh shit um and the mom didn't see the the monster but she did say to the paper that uh something had been fighting with their dogs at night like the dogs had been really aggressive and upset at night barking and that kind of stuff and that maybe they saw something maybe that's what was going on um and then another, like a mother and son duo, not the the Gene and his mom, but another mother and son said that they were walking to um, a stock pond on their farm and uh, they saw the thing run out in front of them. Uh, apparently the animal, the, the creature, the critter, turned around to face them and started growling and began throwing rocks at them. Um, and eventually uh, they kind of got freaked out and tried to get away and then the, the creature ran. Um, so it was apparently pretty traumatic to see this giant beasty thing yep. um, but eventually the sightings sort of peter out and they stop entirely and it made a lot of people kind of question as to whether these people had actually seen anything or if it was like a mass hysteria situation or what had been going on maybe it was a misidentification one man from the town named john luttrell uh went and talked to a reporter and he made the accusation that the first guy mr gant that saw it he said mr gant probably saw a buck deer you know he's a 72 year old man he probably don't know what he saw um it probably he just probably started this by accident didn't know what he saw and of course mr gant being the man who had lived in that place for 72 years was like i know what the fuck a buck deer looks like it was not a deer thank you very much i know what i shot at so shot in the dark i'm sorry uh we're taking care of a friend's dog and he is trying to get in my lap <laughs> that's what i've been doing if you're watching the video yeah. i'm so sorry he's a needy little bastard he but is. we love oh, him there he is over by Leah. Yeah, he's y'all can't see him though, so um but anyway so shot in the dark what animal did mr gant compare the caddo critter to okay was it a an orangutan was it b a gorilla Gor- Gorgira? I don't know. That was racist. I should stop yeah, that. Yeah, what are you doing? I was trying to say it in fun fun <laughs> ways. Holy but, yeah, Jesus <laughs> Christ. That was just really racist, and I apologize. <laughs> was it an orangutan, a gorilla, or a bear? Oh, man. I'm going to go with orangutan, because it's that's the most people-like one. Orangutan. No, it was a gorilla, and, and now I feel bad. Can we cut that out? No. We have, we have two ways of recording now. Nothing comes out. We used to cut out a lot of racist shit because I love doing accents. Yeah, I was going to say, it's always the accent that gets me because I'm really bad at them. And when I, I try to say it in a fun way and then it just comes out as racist. But now Y'all. since we have video, we can't just have a jump cut. Look, I'm willing to jump cut this shit. Oh, that's embarrassing. Um, but you do have to take the shot, so yeah, I'm gonna do it. Why have don't fun. you? Why don't you uh, narrate my shot in a very racist accent? No, thank you. I do Excuse not want to take that because it's gonna be Irish or something, and it's gonna be be terrible <laughs> and racist. So no, no, you're going to attempt <laughs> Irish, and it's gonna come out in another terrible Asian accent, yeah. like everything else. Yeah, Leah. You're such a racist. I'm ashamed. and um, Good. Yeah. Good. That's how you learn, through shame. You're right. But you know what? What's going to yes. be great is in 10, 15 years, somebody's going to find this, and you're not going to get a job because of it. Or you're going to get fired. You're going to be kicked off of hosting the Oscars. I'm fine with for that, For this too. right here. Because it's going to be a real heavy, like a lot of Korean films are going to be in it. You know? Because that Korean film, y'all, it's, it's already really amazing, good. but it is having a... A huge impact right now. And 10 years from now, Leah's going to be hosted the Oscars. And they're going to be like, remember that one time? (laughs) Remember that Biscuit Fupa episode when you did an accent? To be fair, I was trying to do Japanese and like the kaiju, the way in in the kaiju monster films that they say. Yeah, Leah, we all know what you were trying to do. It was bad. (laughs) Yeah, I know. And I feel bad about it. (sighs) All right. Jim Bean Peach, here we go. All right. You have fun with that. How was it? 
pretty dang good. Okay, good. Wash it yeah. down with some strawberry. Um, so Mr. Gant said that uh, it was not, in fact, a deer. He knows what deer looks like, and it looked like a gorilla. Um, and other people in Caddo were like, uh, maybe it was a black bear. Maybe it was a yak that got away from its yak herd. I don't it's really... I don't know about that, but um, no one ever really kind of figured out what it was that everybody was seeing. And so eventually it died out. They just sort of tried to put it behind them. No one really saw it again. So they just assumed that if it was a thing, it had moved on. If it wasn't a thing, people would stop seeing it. So who cares? Um, But then uh, a couple years later, (laughs) there was another town. Um, and it is called Haskell, Texas, mm-hmm. and uh, it's about 70 miles northwest of Caddo, and they start getting creature sightings as well. Um, and they're concerned about it as well, um, and eventually they have a flap very similar to what happened in Caddo. There's another so, flap? Yeah. God damn. So the residents say that it had been going on for a really long time. They they said that it had been reported for at least 80 years <sighs> up to the point, Ooh. you know, in the 60s when this, this flap happened. The residents say that, you know, it's a known creature. It spends its summers up in the mountains, um, and then it prowls the lowlands during the winter, and it it kills livestock. Um, it's got a very chupacabra kind of M.O. where they've got a lot of lo- livestock mutilations in the area and dogs getting attacked and that kind of thing. Um, but they're describing it as this giant uh, Sasquatch. It's described as even bigger than the Caddo Critter. Um, but I've got to tell you what they call it because it's my favorite. Oh, here we go. <laughs> they call it the Haskell Rascal. <laughs> It's so cute. Okay, I actually really like that. That's fun. <laughs> it's the Haskell That's Rascal fun. and the Caddo Critter. Um, and some people eventually start putting it together thinking, hey, maybe it's possible that the Caddo Critter and the Haskell Rascal might possibly be the exact same creature. Um, and it's, you know, it's a possibility. Um <clears throat> And then the third name that this potential creature goes by, uh, there's another community called Holly, and it's about 82 miles away from Caddo and about 42 miles away from Haskell. So the same general area, not super close, but the same, you know, if you're, you're thinking if it's a large primate, it is possibly within the realm of ranges within several years of each other. You know, it right. could be migratory to a point. Um, and so they, they think that this might also be another sighting of this same similar creature um and this is in the town of holly um and this is a very small town as well only a about six six hundred to six hundred and fifty people depending on which census you're looking at very small town as well um and in the summer so this is a little bit later so in the summer of 1977 is when they had their big bigfoot flap um (laughs) Big big foot flap. The big big foot flap. Yeah. Big big foot foot flap flap. <laughs> yeah. Right. So it started in July of seventy seven. There were two boys. Uh, one was Larry Suggs and he was fifteen, and one was Tom Roberts, and he was fourteen. And they were both clearing brush on the property of the Abilene Boys Ranch, uh, where they were residents. And uh, you know they they were doing their chores, clearing the brush. Um, and about ten in the morning, the two boys sit down to take their morning break. And Steve, they start hearing branches cracking and then rocks start getting hurled from all directions sort of, you know, towards them f- from the sort of scrub brush behind them. Mm-hmm. And they're freaked out. Uh, one of the boys gets hit in the leg by a rock and eventually they end up seeing this creature. And they said uh, that it looked kind of like an ape but it still looked kind of human said it had very large arms and the arms hung down kind of ape-like to the knees um and that they were just like startled and freaked out and they were just not okay um so they run off to the home uh, to a nearby ranch home um to a man named uh, mr ed mcfarland but Mr. McFarland wasn't home, but his daughter was. So his daughter, Renee, who was 15, grabbed a deer rifle and said, come on, boys, let's go Bigfoot hunting. Because why not? 
Um, and so they end up finding and seeing the beast. Uh, but Renee gets freaked out. And she's like, look, I don't want to kill it. It looks too human. You shoot it. So they get, she gives the rifle to one of the boys and the boys tries to shoot at it. Um, but the teen misses and he gets knocked to the ground because of the recoil of the gun. He wasn't really a good shot mm. at all. Um, so eventually they're like, well, fuck, maybe this is a bad idea. And they ran away um, because the animal ran away at the gunshot sound. Um, and they later brought people by. They found footprints. Um, the footprints were very large. Um Oh, I didn't tell you what they called this one. <laughs> the the ha- Haskell Flap School. <laughs> so the first one was the Caddo Critter. Then we had the Holly, uh, excuse me, the Haskell Rascal. This is the Holly Him. Oh, I don't like that one. Yeah, it's not as good. That um, suck. Yeah, but they call, call him the Call it him. the Holly Jolly Christmas. <laughs> it's better. <laughs> um, but no, he, he was the Holly <laughs> Him. Proud of myself. Um, and uh, like I said, they measured these tracks. Um, the tracks were, you know, they, they had like four foot, like toe prints and a, a ball of like the front of a foot, like someone was running on the fronts of their feet. Okay. Um, they said the stride only looked like it, it, like it was about a four foot stride, kind of a large creature, but not sure really what it was, that kind of thing. Um, and then they also had a lot of goats go missing. Like, they had 21 goats go missing by a pen. And uh, a few, like, yards away, they found a few goat carcasses. But then the rest of the goats are just fucking missing. So, maybe the hem just was like, look, I want a goat herd. It's a chupacabra, too? Like I said, and and that's what I'm saying. It has a lot of chupacabra-esque M.O. vibes. Well, the chupacabra did suck them dry and left the corpses. So, they just disappeared. But, like... Well, no, but a few of them were sucked dry and the carcasses were there, oh. but the rest of them were gone. Well, never mind. And then, like I said, there was a lot of cattle mutilations in the region as well, which is also sort of drawn it's back into the chupacabra, chupacabra story. Yeah. So maybe the holly hem was a, a, a chupacabra and not a sasquatch. Maybe sasquatch and chupacabra are working in, in tandem. It's a group, a tag team. Yeah. I don't know, but um, yeah. Oh. So they end up uh, having a lot of hunters, like Bigfoot hunters, come in and like try to find the Holly Hem. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite stories that I saw about this particular Bigfoot flap, just the fact that it's rural Texas, made me laugh. The Holly Hem, they used the Bigfoot mania around the holly him to draw children into vbs so the holly first baptist church put out a flyer that they mailed to everybody in town and they had like a draw the holly him contest on the back of it and apparently they that gimmick of of the bigfoot flyer they had a record 109 children attend their vacation bible school that summer yeah <laughs> because of the bigfoot flap yeah, well you, you gotta you gotta pray the, fl- the you gotta bigfoot pray the him away. away yeah there you go i was trying to think of something fun I, I, I no i'm sorry yeah i'm sorry but y'all it's just like no you gotta pray the COVID away <laughs> that works don't worry about all the things that can actually protect you from it yeah well um, and let's see, they also, uh, some dude put up a $5,000 reward for the capture of the Holly him. And of course that never panned out. Yeah. Um, people said maybe it's like a wildcat, maybe it's a bear, maybe it's et cetera, et cetera. But no one ever caught anything like that in the area. Um, and they're. There are occasionally Bigfoot esque sightings in that area of West Texas, but it, they're not super. It's not like the Pacific Northwest when you get a sighting of that every few months, you mm-hmm. know, up into recent times. This is, you'll get one every now and then, but it's years in between sightings in that area. So if there are a lot of Bigfoot there, they're good at hiding. Even better at hiding. I don't know. Is that the plural of Bigfoot? Big Just feet? Bigfoot? No, I mean, the plural of Bigfoot is Bigfoot, yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going to say, blue, blue feet. Bl- big, blue big, feet, big feet. See, I got I got to thinking about. I had the conversation about Bluetooth with somebody one time. It's like, how do you say multiple Bluetooth headsets? You say Bluetooths. Bluetooths. No. It's Bluetooth. No, it's Bluetooths. Anyway, I, I completely messed myself up, and I apologize to everyone out there. Because Bluetooth is a, a name. Yeah. 
Leah, I know. Not the noun. God damn it. It's supposed to be funny, Leah. It's not it's not like a legitimate we should call this blue teeth. Go into the into the Walmart and see their wall of blue teeth and just pick one. The more you say blue teeth, the more <laughs> I know, it's, my it's skin miserable. like just <laughs> It makes me uncomfortable, and I feel like I need to zip my skin suit off and, like, shed out of it. Like, does that... Do you ever get that feeling? Nope. <laughs> Not once. <laughs> Leah's Edgar suit. Sometimes words or textures... A lot of times it's textures. Bread, wet bread makes me feel that way, too. But it <laughs> makes me feel like I need to shed my mortal coil. You know, like, I just gotta get it off. It's just a physical sensation that I would like yeah. to be able to like get out of here. Like a couple of months ago, we had someone make an amazing dolce de leche cake <laughs> from scratch. And it, I mean, it tasted great. And Leah took one bite and she was like, oh, oh. And she sat in the corner and cringed the whole time because it's just like milk underneath some bread. Right? And I felt, um, well, I mean, it's you, you soak the cake know, in several, in three different milks or whatever. Right. It's tres leches. And tres leches. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Not dolce de leche. Yeah. Thank dolce you. de leche is caramel sauce, which is yeah, delicious. But that's wrong. tres leches. Yeah. And I think I got the two confused in my head. So when he said, you know, I have a tres leches cake, I was like, oh, that sounds amazing. <laughs> Um, let's do it. And she then was, she I was seriously... sucking my cock at the time. She went, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that sounds so good. Ew. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, but I thought it, I thought it sounded amazing because I thought it was going to be caramel and it turns out it Holy was wet fuck. cake. Ugh. And it honestly, and, and I'm so glad that the guy that made it was such an amazing sport and like just understood that it's like my sensory processing bullshit and not oh, like no. his cooking. I would have. I would everybody else out. was like, "Oh, it's so good," and I'm just sitting here going, "Nope, nope, nope." Yeah. I think it that literally came out of my mouth. Like, <laughs> but it tasted great though, didn't it? It tasted fine, <laughs> but the texture made it me didn't want taste to. Fine. It tasted great. It well, tasted yeah. like sugary cake, which I love. Uh, so that's milk. great, but sugary cake and cereal milk. Oh. So good. Oh. But I did. I put one bite of it in my mouth and I just go, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> I think she may have uh, spit it back out. I'm no, not sure. I swallowed it. But oh, yeah, you did. God damn. It was ever like, because I was, once I saw what it was, I was like, oh, I'm not going to like this, but I'm going to be able to eat it. Like, I've eaten my way through like meals that I didn't care for that I was served yeah. by other people. But for whatever reason, my fucking body just absolutely noped out of that. And, <sighs> my body makes me embarrassed a lot so uh, excuse me speaking of mm. i'm just glad we have friends that understand that i'm crazy so you are definitely crazy <laughs> so you got that going for you huzzah oh the information of that oh, um, was from the cryptid wiki as well as texas cryptid hunter.com Ooh, texas cryptid hunter Soon coming to A&E. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> actually, these stories have, I do believe, been covered on one of the Bigfoot, Finding Bigfoot of course shows. Um, I don't watch those shows because Bigfoot hunting sounds a lot like hiking and camping to me and don't sign me up for that. Bigfoot hunting. Um, I'm interested in Bigfoot. I think it's fun. But, like, don't ask me to hike or camp because that's exactly how you get, like, fallen off the side of a cliff and, and disappeared. I'm good. Deal. I will not ask you to hike or camp. <laughs> Thank you. Even though those are two of my favorite things in the world. I don't Hiking think first you hike then or camp. Camping to rest. I don't think you've done either of those things. Sure haven't. They're my favorite things, though. I, I, I like to, I've told you this before, I like to take a gentle stroll in nature and I like to have a camper tent or a cabin. Yeah. Well, too damn bad. I'm, I'm not a... We're not doing either now. I'm not a strenuous hike girl because I am so clumsy I will fall off the cliff. <laughs> Period. It's yeah. going to happen. Uh, all right. Well, let's give the camera some rest time. All right. And some charge time. Okay. And uh, I guess we'll be back for story two very shortly, huh? We sure will. Okay. See y'all then. Welcome back, everyone. Steve has decided to chill the fuck out. <laughs> Because uh, he was going crazy during the break. Wouldn't leave anyone alone. Like he does. So, now now we're good. So, he knows that it's showtime. Yes. So, now he's going to bathe for everyone. <laughs> he likes to be watched. <laughs> Steve it's a does. Thing. Steve loves to be watched. Yeah. Uh, all right, Leah, what, what are we doing? Okay, well, our second story of the evening 
isn't okay so since you did like a not spooky story last time i thought that i would sort of come in with like oh something happened hold on let's see i don't know if we lost any audio but we'll find out real soon the computer computer did something weird because i spilled some shit on the mouse over here so all right that's not good let's find out okay well hey (laughs) that's editing leah's problem um (laughs) so um anyway like i was saying you did like a not ghosty story last yeah. time. And I did. I, I did a sentimental story. Yeah. So I decided that it would be okay to do a not ghosty story this time. I guess it falls more along the lines of true crime. Is it lady baseball players? No, it's not. Then um, I don't care for it. Uh, it's more along the lines of a civil rights riot um, because that's what it is. Okay, I could get into this. Yeah. And it's really badass, and it's something that I had never heard of before so i was scrolling tiktok because that's apparently my life now because (laughs) what else am i gonna do with my time um i was scrolling tiktok and i saw i uninstalled tiktok because all the fucking notifications i was getting oh you can turn the notifications off that's what i I just took it off because i wasn't using it anyway Uh, well it's really fun and i enjoy it but anyway so I was scrolling TikTok and I saw a guy talking about this story, but he's apparently, um, so this happened in North Carolina and apparently there's um, a Native American man that's running for, I want to say Congress, I I think it was House of Representatives, but he was running for one of those things um, and he just sort of played his political ad and his political ad was talking about this particular happening um, and he's one of the people of the tribe that is central to this story um and i thought it was really super freaking cool i looked it up i did a lot of research about it because i thought it was so intense and interesting and just something that i feel like everybody should have heard about and nobody has or at least you know the white kids from this part of the state have never heard it because i like i said i did not learn that in in school and i think it's an incredible part of native history and is it an Alabama story? No, it's a North Carolina story. Okay. I um, so heard people it. more regional to North Carolina may know it, but I seriously doubt that. I mean, it's just, I mean, a lot of the times in the civil rights movement, you'll hear, um, you know, a lot about black activists, about white activists working with black activists, but you don't hear a lot about. Black activists and whacktivists, they're called. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. But you don't hear a lot about Native peoples um, being active portions, like parts of, of the civil rights movement. So that's what this is. And I'm really excited to tell you because I think it's badass because it involves the Ku Klux clue I can't say that god damn it Coo. it involves the Ku Klux Klan getting their ass handed to them and it's magnificent so um, I'm going to be telling you about the Battle of Hayes Pond and um, so a little backstory on the people involved so <laughs> oh god what happened there <laughs> I inhaled and it was a moist inhale <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Oh God! <coughs> you don't know how many times in my life I've had a moist inhale. Oof. Anyway, so the tribe that we're talking about um, call themselves the Lumbee, and um, so unfortunately, in uh, you know the United States <laughs> at the time, um, so 1930s or excuse me, the 1830s is when we're talking about the United States government starts enacting a lot of their policies of removing Native Americans from their, you know, lands and yeah. forcibly locating them or relocating them, um, entire tribes, communities, populations along the Trail of Tears and and just sending them out west um putting them on reservations that kind of thing um and it was very very bad uh, <clears throat> and also in that part of the country previous even to the 1830s and the the indian removal act um the a lot of the areas that's where a lot of british people were landing and where colonialization kind of started in the americas so a lot of the tribes in that area were impacted decimated um completely fucked up by a lot of the wars and the plagues and all of the shit that were caused in that general region because of colonization right. and all of the practices that were involved in that. So the Lumbee people are actually um, uh, like a, a, 
they're not cult like genetically culturally distinct. There are groups of tribes that banded together um, because they were the remnants of other tribes, mm-hmm. um, and they have all grouped themselves together and they call themselves the Lumbee after uh, a river that runs through that area. Um, so they aren't federally recognized as a Native American tribe. They are recognized by North Carolina as as a tribe, but uh, federally they've <laughs> sued for it and they've they've petitioned to be recognized federally for a very long time. But they still aren't recognized by the federal government because they don't have that yet yeah, because th- they're bits and pieces of other mm. groups that were destroyed by colonialism instead of one you know monolith of, so the of a tribe saying, we can't trace your tribe yeah back anywhere. we we fucking never mind yeah. the fact that we destroyed <laughs> all of your tribes yeah, exactly but we can't trace you back so so you don't count so you don't get any casinos yeah you don't i was get saying any, any religious exemptions exactly no, so they the united states government is fucking these people over like <laughs> yeah. super seriously like even today um but yeah so um in the 1835 constitution of north carolina um when they were classifying who were free people and who were slaves um they categorized native americans as free peoples of color but as free persons of color they still had absolutely no civil rights they could not own weapons they could not vote they couldn't attend white schools they couldn't you know um they had the slight benefit of not being enslaved per se but i mean in everything but name they they were you know free peoples of color that that's yeah. that's about the only benefit that they had from their status um and during the american civil war the confederate army conscripted them for labor um but we actually have talked about this tribe of people when we talked about the lowry wars about how a bunch of the lumbee were like fuck you guys we're gonna go live in the swamp and just kill a bunch of confederates like mm. so that we've we've talked that, about look, this group of people before look that sounds like an excellent pastime. Yeah. Like, I that mean, sounds like something I could get behind. Y'all want to go kill some Confederates today? Sure. I'll <laughs> hang out in the swamp. Yeah. So, like I said, we've done that whole episode already. And that yeah. was another piece of history that I had never heard of and was super excited to I hear. I remember anyway. that one. Yeah. And it was fun. Yeah. So Mostly um, the, the killing of the Confederates. Yeah. I don't want to be I mean, that guy, but, like, it was pretty fun. I mean... The what the Confederates did to them, I I get it. Yeah. You know. Heritage, not hate. Uh, okay, um, but yeah. So eventually, um, like for whatever reason, they get recategorized as Cherokee when they're not at all Cherokee. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's a just whole easy. like yeah. All, the, all Latin Americans are Mexican. Yeah, now, I was gonna know? say like the entire <laughs> like they have been fucked over by so many governments just because they can't like they're you're like we don't know what skin. to do with you, so we're just gonna call you this. You're kind of olive skinned, and I'm used to saying <laughs> Cherokee, so yeah. that's what I'm going Close with. Close enough. Um, no, it was fucking ridiculous but um a lot of the lumbee were located um and lived around and in communities um in uh robeson county north carolina um hundreds and hundreds of native americans from that tribe um specifically fought for the united states in world war ii um they um served you know like lots of them were were war veterans um and they were subject to segregation oh, just like me. black people were um yeah. and weirdly in this area because of the high population oh. of native americans it wasn't just like white people colored people that's it <clears throat> there was like a triple segregation so they segregated the natives from the black people from the white people like it was a triple segregation situation oh, in a lot of places here I'm so, um, racism has always confused me like it does everyone but like fucking why like are you gonna cross contaminate and become <laughs> ultra colored <laughs> Is that a thing? I I don't (laughs) get it. It's a behemoth. What are we going to do? uh, I mean, I hope what I said wasn't offensive because I'm on the right side of the argument. But I'm just saying, like, is that is that what we're what we're trying to. Anyway, anyway, I don't understand. (laughs) I don't understand. But anyway, um, so eventually um, that they they start. Like I said, there's a lot of notes and there's a lot of specific tribal history that I think is fascinating. 
But I'm going to sort of break it down and just start talking about the civil rights movement and going into the the Battle of Hayes Pond. Mm -hmm. So they all get together. They decide to band together as the Lumbee tribe. They've named themselves. They've chosen this name. They're, you know, recognized, you know, within the the state government as, you know, a group. Um, and so that all happened sort of in the mid to late 50s. So they're still being heavily discriminated against. They don't have the civil rights that white people do. Um, they've become part of sort of a local civil rights movement on their own. Enter the fucking Ku Klux Klan. So in 1954, Brown versus Board of Education happens and they rule you can't racially segregate public schools anymore. It's unconstitutional. Fucking right. stop it. So it's <laughs> obviously fucking stop. Uh, it. Yeah, fucking stop <laughs> it. So this riles up the Klan. So the Klan had sort of petered out and not become a whole lot of anything. Mm. Obviously, it started with Nathan Bedford Forrest, um, Confederate statue extraordinaire. Um <laughs> And uh, it, it started in, in Pulaski, Tennessee, and during the Civil War. And, and it, it had its time, but it had petered out a little bit by this point. Now, the segregationists, or, you know, the people that wanted to maintain segregation, mm-hmm. decide, hey, remember when we all, like, danced in fields with sheets? Let's do that again. <laughs> um, and so all of the white supremacists sort of crawl out of the woodworks and they start joining KKK groups again um, and they just become more prevalent um, and they start speaking out and having rallies and doing all of the right white supremacy bullshit that they have historically done. Um, Historically, the Klan was very violent, obviously, Um, lynching people, running people down, burning crosses in people's yards. It was bad. But in this area by the 50s, they didn't do as much of the violence. There was still a shit ton of intimidation and assholery, Mm -hmm. but they weren't generally killing people, which is uh, good, I guess. But then there was this guy. Leah's pro Ku Klux Klan. You heard it here first. It's Nope. Mm -mm. so (laughs) leah is a kkk apologist no i'm just saying like one of (laughs) one of the recurrent nightmares that i have from my childhood is if you've never been to montgomery there's a civil rights museum there and there's one room in the civil rights museum where they have the robes of like kkk like like actual we haven't been to it but i want to go it's it's a beautiful museum it is very hard to take in but it's worth it and you should are you talking about the lynching museum no that's a lynching memorial this is the civil rights museum everybody had to go when they were a kid correct i have been to the yeah it's Um, it's got the the rosa parks bus in it yes all of that it's got all of that stuff great museum highly recommended if you're in montgomery but right um they have this one room that is set up full of of clan robes and they're in giant glass cases and you sort of walk through them and i don't think they're as big as i remember them in my mind because i was a very small child the first time i went through that Mm -hmm. but i just remember and it's they're just sort of set up on mannequins i believe like i said Mm -hmm. it's very nebulous in my mind but i was terrified walking through that room and for whatever like that is my nightmare that is my nightmare fuel is a room like a dark cold room full of disembodied clan K-K-K robes man man yeah terrifying <laughs> leo what the fuck like, i know there are so many nights when you're like i didn't sleep well i had nightmares is this the nightmare sometimes yeah oh my god legitimately leo. it is <laughs> would you want me to like start weaning you <laughs> off of that like do you want me to get a kkk robe just to wear in the bedroom that is terrifying you and turn fuck it, you no. You turn it from a fear into something that no, you... No, sir. We are not kinking anything like that. I'm just oh. saying it would fix. It might fix it. Not no. it would. It Mm-mm. might fix it. No. Leah? Leah, you have to turn oh. your fear into something you love. No, I'm I'm fine with still being not okay with that. Um, I'm just saying. Ugh. I'll get a KKK robe. I look like the kind of guy who would have one anyway, Leah. Please like never. That, I look don't like that guy. Don't even joke about that. I mean, Ugh. I don't want it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not on the. I'm not on that side of the fence. But I kind of look like 
the guys. Yeah, who go to the I was gonna say, especially you know? after you've had your head shaved freshly, Correct. you you look yeah. just like like if there, there's you a look subreddit. like you look like the chubby uh, neo Nazis from that movie. Um, yeah, that movie. You know the one I'm talking about. Yeah, uh, American History X. Yes. Yeah. Um, it, there's a subreddit called "Behold the Master Race," <laughs> and what it is, Jeez. what it is, is thousands of posts of my selfies. That's what it <laughs> fucking looks like. Just, just sort of fat yeah, white it's, guys. It's people that look like me and or skinny people with no teeth at rallies. Yeah, oh, that's Jesus. what it is. Of course, I'm just saying. I anyway. look like the kind of guy, like if somebody breaks into our house, is like, oh, there's KKK rope here. That makes sense. That's what they're going to think. It makes sense. You look do at this. look that way. Look at this. I mean, I wouldn't have it for anything other than kink. <laughs> Absolutely not. So that like, is, I mean, no. is that still offensive? Yes, like, it's us, very offensive, for Mitchell. For kink it out? It's very offensive. Come on, Leah. Jesus Christ, it's offensive. <laughs> it makes what I did earlier seem like a ball of no, kittens. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, because we don't have the robe. You did the accent. Oh, God damn it. Anyway. No, no. Let's move on, please, for the okay. love of God. Okay. Yeah. So, in 1956, there was this dude, and his name was James W. Catfish Cole. Oh. Um, and he was a former member of, like, the Klan organization. Um, and he was like, you know what? The old Klan was great, but... This new clan is going to be even better and even more white supremacisty. Oh, um, and new so clan. he founded uh, the North Carolina Knights, and he installed himself as the Grand Wizard, and he held their first rally um, in uh, a Robeson County community called Shannon, um, where he made these fiery defenses of segregation in public schools, and because uh, of course he did, right. Yeah. Of course. Um, and he starts using these speeches about segregation to sort of grow his following throughout that next year. And he starts promoting the Klan in all of the towns in the area. Um, he's super... He's doing it in a very antagonistic fashion in that he's going to places that have high populations of oppressed peoples and saying... Yeah. Hey, you can't do anything about it. Like he's going to the place where all of the black activists are are seeking to end segregation, where they're having rallies and shit like that. He's doing everything he can to piss these people off. Mm -hmm. And in uh, 1957, in October, um, part of the Klan group that belonged to him um, attacked the NAACP, uh, attacked one of their members' houses in town. Um, but the NAACP guys had guns and they shot the fuck back. Um, and they were like, F fuck off, please. Um, and so they didn't really fuck with black people like in that area anymore because they were definitely going to get shot. Because, hey, yeah, that's good, I guess. Yeah. As Leah said before. Look, I'm saying <laughs> if you Thank defend God. your fucking self against those dumbasses, <laughs> it gets worse. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. So. In 1958, he was like, okay, terrorizing black people didn't work. Let's find another another target. So he decided to go fuck with the Native Americans. And it turns out the Native Americans were not going to have it either. Oh, um, good. So <laughs> on January the 13th of 1958, uh, Cole and a bunch of his clans bros um, invited a journalist along with them. Uh, his name was Bruce Roberts to cover like a rally that they were having one evening in uh, Robeson County. Um, and so they go to this town called St. Paul's. They burn a cross near a home of a Native American woman. Um, they didn't like her because she was dating a white guy. And so oh. you get a burnt cross. Um, <laughs> what a douche. Um, anyway, and then they also burn another that was a cross. Fucked up Oprah episode, I guess. Jesus right. Christ. And then um, they also burned another cross in a nearby community uh, of Lumberton, uh, in the the home of like in the front yard of a home of a Native American family who had had the audacity to move into a white neighborhood. Yeah. So they, of course, targeted them and, and burnt, a, you know, a, a cross in their yard mm -hmm. as well. Um, and so he also told this journalist, hey, guys, guess what we're planning? We're going to have this giant Klan rally next Saturday uh, somewhere in Robeson County around Pembroke, something like that. Um, 
And that's that town of Pembroke is where most of the Lumbee community live. Mm -hmm. Um, And he said, I'm going to have this rally. There's going to be tons of clans. People are going to show up and we're going to have a rally against or for segregation. They're pro segregation. Just they're going to have this big old rally. And uh, of course, the the newspaper printed it saying, yeah, there's going to be a big rally on (sighs) next Saturday. Um, And it. It just got out in town um, and it spread in the news of this. All of the local publications picked it up and repeated the story saying, hey, you know, this might be dangerous. Um, These people are coming to town. Um, And Cole said that he was going to attract hundreds and thousands of Klansmen. Everybody's going to be pouring into this rally like he's expecting tons of clans people to show up um and so rumors sort of started circulating um and people started noticing that the gun stores in town were selling a lot of ammunition on that next week over the the next few days and a lot of people started kind of fearing that it would be kind of violent um that either they weren't sure what was going to happen everybody was really on edge about this situation um and uh, one of the Klansmen goes up to the local uh, newspaper and says, you know, hey, will you advertise the rally? Um, and they wanted to post uh, flyers and stuff to display and, you know, go in all over town to publicize this event. And they even got in a truck with a loudspeaker, um, kind of like in, was it the, the second Blues Brothers where they're just driving around? with the the PA system in that car <laughs> same thing but they're like we're being super racist and we're going to have a racist party on Saturday come to the racist party like they were just driving around with a truck and a loudspeaker just saying hey we're going to have a hundred clansmen being clansmen out here fuck y'all like that was their whole thing That's great. they're just trying to agitate the community and build up this whole thing um so the sheriff of Robeson County, his name is Malcolm McLeod, and he drives uh, to Cole's home. So Cole lives in South Carolina. He's not even from the area. He's just stirring the pot. Mm-hmm. Um, so the the county sheriff goes to South Carolina, talks to Cole, says, look, please, for the love of fuck, cancel this rally. It's just going to get you hurt. It's going to get our folks hurt. We don't want anything to do with y'all. Just fucking stop it. Um, And he obviously taunts them and says, fuck you, basically. (laughs) Um, And so everybody was... Like, a lot of the police officials were opposed to the Klan's presence because they were afraid that it was just going to cause a lot of people injury and, you know, that kind of situation. So they were just trying to keep them out. Um, But so eventually Cole's looking for a location in Pembroke that's going to lease him land because that's one thing that he was all about was if he can rent the the property if he can legally be there they can't legally make me stop correct um and so he couldn't find anyone in the actual area that he wanted to be in to rent him a field but a nearby area um in, in uh so there's a white guy farmer in uh Hayes Pond um and he had a small cornfield and and he's like, yeah, sure, you can uh, rent my property to have your clan situation on. Um, and so they did that. And yeah, so everybody knows in town that this thing's going to happen. Everybody knows that it's definitely being pointed towards the Native American community. And they're pissed about it. They don't want these people anywhere near them. They fought against segregation for so long. Like, it's absolute bullshit. And they want to make sure that the Klan never comes the fuck back. So a group of them start organizing at a barber shop. A group of Lumbee start uh, discussing the situation at the VFW. Um, there's a bunch of different little groups. Um, and it's, it's not a one leader kind of situation. It was just everybody talked amongst themselves. And they kind of came up with a community decision that we're going to fuck these people up. Like, we're not going to let them come on our our turf and be fucking dickwads. We're going to make sure they never come back. So um, they just sort of 
start talking amongst themselves and decide something has to be done. And apparently um, there were some local um, black people that worked in the same businesses or worked in businesses that were owned by Klansmen and they were sort of smuggling intelligence and like sort of bits and pieces of information from the actual KKK members themselves to the Lumbee to let them know these are the people who's coming on. (laughs) So like it's, it's like... You know, this makes me happy. People of color getting shit done. Yep. You know, it's and in a week I, before the internet, I'm down for it. It's great. Yeah. Um, so anyway, this is the main event. Um, oh, here so we go. Cole sc- scheduled the rally to start at 8:30 p.m. on January the 18th, and he told everybody that oh, he's expecting about 500 Klansmen. That's who's who's decided to show up. Mm -hmm. So he shows up at about 7 p.m., an hour and a half before it starts. Um, And you'd think if 500 people are showing up, there'll be a lot of people already rolling in at this point. There were 10. (laughs) Yeah, I was going to say, it sounds like the election rallies. (laughs) Yeah. And it makes me so happy. Like, we're going to come out in force and like four people show (laughs) up. And they're out there just (laughs) screaming into the void. (laughs) And you just want to go out to them and go, this isn't Facebook, dumbass. (laughs) Exactly. Like, no one's here for you. Yeah, no one cares. <laughs> um, so like 10 Klansmen show up and they park in the middle of this field um, and they get out. They're carrying guns. Um, and like only one of them decided to show up in their clan robes. Like, yeah. I, I guess they forgot what they were going to change later. I don't know. Um, but like I said, there's about 10 of them and they were super confident that the rest of their 490 something folks were going to show up. Um, just waiting on them. They'll be here. You know, you'll see. Um, and there were, of course, reporters from everywhere. Um, the News and Observer showed up, um, the Associated Press. There were there were lots of, of camera, not camera, but like, you know, clicky cameras. Right. Um, there, there were lots of reporters there lots of and journalists. Photographers. That's what I was going for. Um, and so the Klan sets up a light pole and a generator and a... Um, like a PA system and they put up a big banner with the letters KKK across it and they set up this cross ready to burn after they were done giving their speeches or whatever. Um, So Sheriff McLeod shows up with about 16 deputies um, to maintain the general order and he specifically uh, told his officers, hey look, if the Lumbee attack the Klan, break it up. But give them a minute, you know, like, yeah. let them get in a few punches before you break anything up. Like, yeah. Yeah. we're trying to discourage this from ever happening and by again. a minute, I mean like an hour yeah. or so. Um, and so uh, about 12 more uh, of the State Highway Patrol officers show up um, and they they park down, down the road. So if anything happens, like... They'll be mobilized, but they, they're kind of out of sight. And apparently they had submachine guns because... That was necessary, but anyway. You said this was in the 50s? <laughs> 60s, yeah. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, submachine guns. Yeah. That makes sense. Though. Yes. Um, I so, guess. like I said, there's a bunch of people. So, over the next hour, a few more Klansmen show up in the fields. Um, some of them bring their wives and their children, including the um, the head guy. He brought his wife and kids to the rally, because why the fuck not? Yeah. Um most of the people that showed up were actually from South Carolina. Very few of the Klansmen oh, they bust were them actually... In? Yeah. They bust them in. They bust them they in. They bust them in. Very few of them were actually from Robeson County. Um, and uh, We're here to fight for you, Robeson County. We know what's best for you. Of the 500 that they expected, about 50 Klansmen show up. Mm-hmm. So not a great turnout on their part. But, I mean, there <laughs> yeah. were 50. I mean, same thing. Um, and at the time that the Klansmen start showing up, the Lumbee start showing up. Cars and cars and cars carrying five, six Lumbee each. Yeah. They show up. I'm all um, about it. I'm all <laughs> they, about it. The historians and the, the, the um, reports vary pretty wildly as to how many people showed up, like how many Lumbee showed up. The estimates run from anywhere from 300 to 500 Lumbee men. Um, a lot of them were World War II veterans. Mm-hmm. Um, about 50 female Lumbee showed up. Um, you know. They went overseas and fought for their right to come back and fight you. Yeah. You motherfucker. <laughs> exactly. Um, so you're looking <laughs> like anywhere from three to 600 natives there. Not sure specifically how many because like I said this story got a lot of press and a lot of shit 
was going on. Um, but apparently they were armed to the fucking teeth. Rifles, shotguns, knives, pistols. They had everything and they were ready to use it. Um, and as the Lumbees start showing up, the clans start calling them, you know, Words. racial slurs. There you go. Um, and... <laughs> They just start sh- shouting like it, they were chanting, God damn the KKK and we want coal. So they're after that guy and they're just ready, you know, just ready for it. Um, God, I hope they lynched him. <laughs> like, I don't want to be that guy, but I hope they lynched him. They didn't. Um, God damn just, it, Leah. Spoilers. Um, we'll get there. What happened is even better. Okay. Um, well, if anyway. you say so. But. So, uh, so the sheriff pulls Mr. Cole aside and says, look, I can't control th- the crowd at this point there's way more of them than there are of you will you please just throw in the towel don't hold this meeting don't get it started i I mean fucking stop it you don't know about white guy pride do you Leah? (laughs) apparently not (laughs) um and so he was like fuck no we're gonna go on with this and and remember they're very very armed people here You've got about 50 friends, and they're a bunch of, like, women and children that you claim to care about, like, just hanging out right there, too. Like, but sure, we're going to go on with antagonizing these heavily armed people. Fine. Um, so, anyway, uh, Cole refuses to suspend the meeting. So, by 825, they had all sort of circled around the light pole, just waiting for something to happen. And right before it was supposed to start at 8 30 um he had already started giving a little bit of like a segregationist sort of tirade it hadn't started in earnest but like he had already started saying shit right. um and so at about 8 eight thirty, two uh lumby men run forward and they <laughs> ask him uh uh do, do, where'd it go I, what are you here for um and he was like we come to talk to these here people uh and the lumbie were like you ain't talking to anybody tonight and so one of them takes the butt of his rifle and busts the light off the light pole nice um and all like it goes completely pitch black because they're in the middle of a fucking field uh there was only the one light around so it's pitch black and <laughs> very quiet and then all hell starts breaking loose because the lumbies start firing but they're firing into the air they're not actually trying to hurt or murder anybody they're just trying to scare the absolute shit out of these clansmen so they're like i said most of them are firing in the air they're punching people um shit like that happens (laughs) um and they were basically just trying to to chase them off um and so uh like i said they there was a skirmish um they were also firing at the tires of the clansmen cars yeah. as they were like leaving i would love that <laughs> and a lot of clansmen ended up running into ditches i was gonna say um, if nothing else they might get away but they're also gonna have to fix their axles and all yeah, that shit yeah they were so fuck them. i would That'd say they were causing chaos they weren't intentionally trying to physically hurt anybody because they knew that they could get right. you know get prosecuted for that but scaring the shit out of them they were 100 percent gonna do that shit so shot well, in the dark god damn it i was gonna say or costing them a lot of money yeah and i'm okay with that yes make him pay a lot of money so shot in the dark during the riot what did cole do Did he A, hide under his truck, B, jump into a police cruiser, or C, run into the swamp? Oh, God. Oh, I hope he ran into the swamp. Ran into the swamp. You're right. Yay. Yay. (laughs) He fucking hightailed it into the swamp, leaving behind his wife, Carolyn, and their three children. Yeah, you're goddamn right he did, because that's just what these people do. (laughs) They're fucking pussies. He was just like, at the beginning, like before he was talking to the sheriff, he's like, just make sure my wife and babies get out of here alive. And he fucking hightails his shit and is like, fuck you guys. In in. I'm not going to say in his defense, God damn it! I was about Don't to. Don't defend the Grand Wizard Mitchell. It. I'm not going to say in his defense, but he could be thinking, I'm going to get them away. I'm going to make them chase me from everybody else so that they won't hurt that my wife and child, all children. That's not at all I, what happened. I don't think so either. I'm saying it could be no. that. That's possible nope. because I wasn't there, but I doubt it. I think he's just a pussy. <laughs> Just a big old sopping pussy. Yeah. I mean, that fupa was buttered. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking buttered fupa. <laughs> oh. 
so um yeah he ran off into the swamp left his wife and kids behind um, and a lot of clansmen oh. followed suit um and uh i just some- see a bunch of like just fucking jethro turn oh <laughs> we, we're going into the swamp now all right <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> and uh, several of them got in their cars and like I tried to to escape. Some of them crashed into ditches. Apparently, uh, Cole's wife Carolyn got her kids into the car and she tried to like drive away, but she freaked out and ended up running her car into a ditch. So the Lumbee actually like were like, "All right, fuck it," and they helped pull her out. They physically helped pull her out of the ditch so she could leave. Yeah, like. They're better people than I will ever be. Correct. <laughs> like, I would have left her there to die in that ditch. I mean, fuck you. If you can't figure out your, if you can't figure your way out of a ditch, you don't deserve to be alive anyway. <laughs> oh, she she needs to keep her husband on a shore lease. That's all I'm saying. But anyway, um, but anyway, Stop buttered up that food a little more. Anyway, so eventually, eventually the sheriff lets off a couple tear gas canisters to try to disperse the crowd a little bit more. And eventually um, they, you know, get everybody stopped. Nobody's like trying to punch in each, in each other at this point. They've got everybody calmed down. Um, they uh, arrested any of the Klansmen that they found hiding in the brush. Um, and McLeod over the loudspeaker said... All right, guys, thanks for coming. You know, it's time to go home and watch Gunsmoke. Like, we're done in time to go <laughs> did, see it on TV. Did he really say it? He time did. To... He said, it's time to go home and watch Gunsmoke on TV. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, that's so, great. by the time nine o'clock sh- sh- rolled by, like, all of this shit happened in 30 minutes. By the time nine o'clock rolled by, uh, the wind had sort of blown away all of the tear grass tear gas and most of the clout crowd had cleared out so the police uh, ended up oh confiscating God. two truckloads of firearms from everybody involved um Jesus. two truckloads um uh, and then oh one clansman bless his heart james garland martin was found drunk as fuck lying in a ditch <laughs> so he was the one that he was supposed to be the sergeant at arms so he just like fell in a ditch is like i guess i'll stay here for a while um um, and he got arrested for public <laughs> drunkenness and carrying a concealed weapon. Um, and eventually shit. he gets um, charged with inciting a riot as well. And then Cole oh. ends up staying in the swamp for two days. <laughs> um, but eventually they find him um, oh. and they arrest him as well. Uh, apparently four Klansmen got minor gunshot wounds, but no one was really hurt. A couple of reporters were punched. Um, like I said, but most people, like no one died. No one was seriously injured. They just got the shit scared out of them. Yep. Um, and after, you know, the shooting stopped, this is probably the best part. Oh. So after the shooting stopped, a lot of the Lumbee, um, several of them stopped and gave interviews for the press. They posed for photographs. Um, they stole the clan's PA system. They took the cross that they were going to burn um, and didn't. Um there was uh, a man named Simeon Oxidine, um, and he was a World War II vet. Um, he was the mayor's son of, of the area. Him and one of his friends, Charles, uh, stole the KKK banner, and they drove in uh, to Pembroke, and like they, they made themselves like a little like a parade driving back in victory into their town Um, and they gathered in front of the police station uh, and they hung and burned an effigy of coal Um, and then Mr. Oxidine and and Charles they drove into Charlotte with the stolen KKK banner and they went into the offices of the Charlotte Observer which is a newspaper there Mm -hmm. uh, right after midnight and they gave an interview and they posed with the banner in their photography studio and that in that picture ends up being um, it's them like wrapped in this banner Uh, it's a really cool photograph you can look it up but uh, it was sent to all of the newspapers through the Associated Press Wire um, and it ends up being a full page spread in Life Magazine because it was just like that's amazing. Fuck the clan. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. So eventually, um, people were arrested for inciting a riot. Um, Cole fought against, you know, being uh, like he he went back to South Carolina. He fought being extradited back to North Carolina, but he did, and eventually he ends up going to prison for it. But, um, like I said, it's 
What was he arrested for? Um, for inciting a riot? He you said? was arrested for civil disorder, uh, inciting a riot. Mm-hmm. And then the other guy, the drunk guy, was also charged with inciting a riot. I love that the drunk guy. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, if I ever got myself in some hot water, that's exactly what I would do is just get fucked up. And be like, <laughs> well, I might as well enjoy it. Yep. While I'm in the middle of it. So, yeah, I could do that. I could see myself getting fucked up and go, I can hide in this ditch. I'll be fine right here in this ditch. Yeah. And they're like, you know, we can see you, right? <laughs> like, like, the ditch is only like three feet high. Like, we can see you in there. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, um, he went on to attempt to, like, try again. He tried to hold other rallies and stuff like that. He tried to rebuild his reputation after he was completely smashed in like a complete public view. Like, cause this yeah. was a big story and people all over the country were laughing at the clan and the clansmen were like, Oh, maybe we don't want to be associated with you. Cause you're a dumbass. Yeah. Um, he has, he also ended up getting arrested in South Carolina for posing as a private investigator. And um, so he was, you know, imprisoned for a while. And so they were like, ah, uh, I guess that guy's not our dude anymore. So they ended up, you know, voting in a different Grand Wizard. I don't know. But he, yeah. because of this situation, he was completely, even in the eyes of the fucking clan, he was disgraced. So, um, and y'all, I've yeah. seen a bunch of, uh, I've watched uh, way too much uh, documentary style stuff on the clan. That's really hard to do. Yeah. To be disgraced within the clan. Yeah. Like you won't you have to denounce the clan for them to be like, well, you're nothing now. Yeah. Like you can do Oh my god, there are so many fucking stupid people. Yeah. That are high ranking in the clan, like fifth grade education that are officers in the clan that that's that's impressive. Yeah. That's really and impressive. And there's also um uh, a song that was written about it that I hadn't heard, but I looked it up on Spotify and it's pretty fun. Um, <laughs> but there was a folk singer, because you know how I feel about folk music, I'm all for it. Yep. Um, there's a folk singer named Malvina Reynolds and she wrote a song about it called The Battle of Maxton Field, um, which is just making fun of the clan. It's fantastic. <laughs> um, and I think Pete Seeger covered it and actually did pretty well with that recording. Mm-hmm. So um, if you're interested, the Pete Seeger version is on Spotify. Um, and like I said, it's all about that. Um, um, a lot of the Lumbee authors themselves like have written accounts of the battles and the tribes and that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, <laughs> it's part of their continued petition uh, to be fully federally recognized by, you know, the United States government hasn't worked yet. Hope it does eventually. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, oh, and the, the, um, politician that's actually the one that I, I got this story off from his his campaign video his name's charles graham and he is a lumbie from uh the robeson county and uh he is running for north carolina's ninth congressional district um so yeah pretty badass i think that video actually did go viral and that's how a lot yeah. of people like myself are just now finding out about this story which i think should have been told yeah, but to us in history class, but when, never was. I was going to say when the white people are controlling everything, like we're not going to do the. They the never. Embarrassing they stuff. never tell us the good shit. Like that's the good shit. Y'all, um, I, I don't know how everybody else is, <laughs> but I can tell you in Alabama high schools, it's not glorified. But the Klan is not talked about in a negative light in history class. They talk about it like it was something that happened right. and that was generally bad. Mm-hmm. But it's not, they don't take it to the point, like, they don't explain the people that were lynched in the streets. Right. They don't explain. Lynching is, is glossed over. Like, it's very, like, <laughs> In my, my private school education, so not even public, you know, like, government regulated in my private school education, it was, we're going to talk about segregation. Like, almost all of our reading assignments throughout school were, like, Maya Angelou and, and like, uh, slavery-related in some way. But the Klan and segregation and all that stuff is not talked about in a, this was a horrible, it was, this is history. Yeah. Like, this is what like, happened. And, and it's just like, and this now happened, we're not and there it's not anymore. a problem anymore. Like, right. That's exactly. how it's talked about. Um, and, and, and it's it's kind of embarrassing to like grow up and be like, shit, high school didn't just suck. It was pretty fucking stupid. Too. And we live in Alabama. A lot of very important civil rights yeah. stuff happened right here. Yeah. And 
the amount of people that know about the shit that happened here is minuscule. Mm-hmm. Like, it is it's absurd. Like, the whole Rosa Parks thing happened right there. You can literally go look at that bus, and yep. most people just barely know a little bit about it. You know, it's... <sighs> Anyway, I'm just disappointed in our educational system, but at the same time, I really hope that guy wins because that sounds fun. And I don't I just, know any of his platforms. I'm not going to say I hope he you're wins. right. I, I was going to say I, I I don't know anything about him, so that's probably not fair. And yep. but I'm just saying I'm very thankful for his campaign that brought that story to my attention because I think it's amazing and yeah. I think it's really something that more people should know. It about, added so. to some hashtag content. Yeah, um, and like I said, just. I, I find those favorite. stories now very interesting. Open wide. <laughs> Please stop. Here comes the content. Please stop. I love anyway. that Bo Burnham special. Yeah. yeah. So um, obviously, <laughs> one of my main sources was that guy's video. That was the first thing I learned about. Um, I looked it up on Wikipedia, and then also the North Carolina um, Cultural Department, whatever. It's the ncdcr.gov, yeah. um, which is a, a primary source for that. So okay. um, very interesting. And seriously, look into the history of the Lumbee peoples because it is so rich and interesting. And they're like a lot of badass stories from that tribe. So yeah. 10 out of 10. Well, I've really enjoyed that story. And, and we've would, gone over way too much. Yeah, it's a, it's a long episode. <laughs> Sorry. And I would love to continue talking, but I really have to pee. Okay. So you want to so, toast? Yeah, do the toast. Okay. It's not good, so let's get it over let's with. Let's also just shut up. Okay. Toast. <clears throat> He's got big feet and lots of hair, goes by many appellations. Whether critter, rascal, or simply him, best avoid his agitations. Nice. <clears throat> The Klansmen tried to gather in a field to burn their cross. The Lumby came in numbers and showed the bigots who was boss. Yeah. Drank. Fucking shit, bitch. All right, let me have a sip, even though I've got to pee like, oh my God. I got to pee so bad. All right, let's get out of here. Okay. Follow us on the social medias. Send us a postcard, P.O. Box 1743, Hartsville, Alabama 35640. Send us an email, Southern Spirits Podcast at gmail.com. Join the Patreon, patreon.com slash Southern Spirits Podcast. What else did I miss, Leah? That's everything. No, merch store. Merch store. Uh, watch the episode on YouTube if you want to. I also need to make this about a minute long so that I don't have to make the song go over into your toast. So let's give it a little bit of space. <laughs> Are you vamping I very poorly? Pee. I've got to pee. Like I, w- I was rushing through it and then I went like, <laughs> Oh, shit, that's going to get into the toast. So now I think we're good, and we will see you next time. (laughs) Bye, y'all.